Hi everyone. So I'm a little bit late. I said I would be on from 9 to 9.30, but I just recorded a, a podcast called, um, and the podcast is called The Weird Weird Waves. Um, so it's a surfing podcast, but we talked health and medicine. So when it's up, I think it should be up on Monday. I'll share it with you guys. So no one is on right now. I'm waiting for someone to join, but I'll just get going. So I'm, I'm basically trying to go live as often as I can in this group to answer questions. Yay, someone's watching. To answer questions and just to talk about um, whatever you guys want to know about. Like any questions you have. This is just, there's just such uncertain times that I think, and when we talk about our mental health, um, you know, sometimes we want to distract and just you know, or just commiserate or to get knowledge and, and learn about different things and get information. One of the questions I had um, was, what am I doing to for my self-isolation, self-care? What's my strategy? What are my protocols? And, um, and so that's what we'll talk about today. If you have any more questions, keep uh, posting them or type them in the comments and I'll see them come up. Um, and yeah, if you have any ideas for other things you want me to talk about, just fire it in the group, or you can even email me privately if you want to. Um, so what am I doing? So basically, you know, on last Saturday, I was working in my practice, and there were a couple patients that wanted to do telemedicine um, that they, they requested it. So I started implementing a telemedicine portal that is um, that's HIPAA compliant, and HIPAA is our like confidentiality and record keeping um, regulations and laws. And so this is like a secure portal. So I joined that and, uh, and you know joined a paid version so I could deliver telemedicine more efficiently with people. But I was only doing a couple of consults in that manner. And then, um, but I was still seeing people in person. Then over the weekend, things seemed like they shifted really rapidly here in Toronto, Canada. I think what happened was we had an escalation in outbreaks. We're really stressed that, um, you know that the curve is gonna um, jump over what our medical system can handle and so there were more rec more serious recommendations about shutting things down I got a message on Monday saying my gym was closed um, I was encouraging my patients to move to telemedicine on Tuesday I had a lot of cancellations and um, but I did see one person in person and it just didn't feel right the naturopathic college um, our regulatory board didn't give us specific instructions for, or they didn't um, explicitly tell us all to shut down, whereas the College of Massage Therapists and Chiropractors in Ontario were told to shut down their practices. The College of, Den of Dentists was to were told to shut down for non-emergencies. We were told that we could stay open, but we had to take certain per uh, precautions. And I just decided I didn't want to put my patients at risk. I didn't want to contribute to spread. It didn't feel right to have people coming in and out of the clinic and being in such contact. And... Um, and so, and there's a shortage on certain, on like medical grade cleaning supplies and barriers like gloves and masks. So I decided I would, um, sh it was a tough decision, but I decided, decided to shut down my practice and move um, exclusively to telemedicine. So I sent an email out to my patients communicating that. And that really pushed me to try and get everything online. Um, our, my clinic owner officially closed our clinic the next day. So for two weeks, um, we are officially closed. So work-wise, and a lot of you are dealing with this, especially if you're self-employed, work-wise things are stressful for sure. So this is, uh, and you know, I don't want to get, well, we can get personal if you want me to get personal, <laughs> but I, but it's, it's a stressful time, right? We, there's just so much uncertainty. I know that, um, I can still deliver, deliver effective care via, um, telemedicine and, and still support people. Um, but the kind of support my patients need right now is probably change, right? We're going from treating like long-term um, foundational conditions and, and sort of like long-term health plans to now more immediate concerns, which for some people could be like child care and, you know, eating and getting their workouts in and just these immediate concerns like we talked yesterday about like overeating mini eggs and how that's going to throw you off your plan and so you know there it's pretend it's possible that some of my patients are scared to reach out to me just because they've been off plan um supplement companies are having an issue with supply um 
so there's a lot of things going on with work that is that is challenging and difficult and uh and time will tell you know how we adapt in that sense so for work wise everything's been moved online so i've been staying home my dog is very happy about that <laughs> um yeah, and I know, you know, for mo many of us, like some of us, our work is easily just transferred online if you work in an office. Others who are running small businesses are totally shut down and there is no source of income. So luckily, we have uh, we owe taxes in April and, uh, in uh, in Canada, in, in, in Ontario, um, and that's been deferred. So I'm, I'm happy about that. But yeah, so there, there's those uh, considerations. So work-wise, everything online. What I'm trying to do right now, and maybe many of you have noticed, is just reach out to the community and see where I can help. So, you know, um, even if that means, like, I'm not currently working seeing patients one-on-one, -on -one, what can I do to assist you guys, and what do you need from me right now, right? So as an naturopath, I have some skills and knowledge and an ability to, not an expert on infectious disease or virology or immunology, but I do have a lot of scientific background and knowledge and an ability to translate some of these um some of this you know japanese or like greek and well actually latin into um some more palatable um uh, communications right and so if you need me to help translate some of the stuff that's going on medical wise feel free to fire your questions you know and even just to be a support, like how can we support our mental health or how can we stay connected or how can we keep things higher vibe and positive during this time? So that's where I'm seeing myself fit in, as well as trying to flatten the curve by not um, getting out into public too much and spreading um, things. When it comes to like general lifestyle and food and, you know, I'm I'm keeping up with my general way of eating. Again, it's it's difficult, right? We talked about like if you don't have routines in place, you're not packing lunches and getting outside, you're probably going to end up eating a little bit more, especially out of boredom. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to stick to my regular consumption of the normal things I eat. I am getting outside. Having a dog helps. I'm getting outside to walk him a few times a day, and I'm generally sticking to walking as my means of exercise. And it's really nice to just be outside no matter what the weather um, it's kind of cloudy today, but to just go out, look at people, you know, and and get some space. That's been really helpful and really important for me to get out into nature, to get out by the lake, to go for long walks, to move my body. Uh, I'm putting myself, so normally I, I go to like fitness classes and gyms and that's how I stay on top of physical activity. And I'm not doing that. Our condo gym is closed. My gym is closed. But online yoga is always been a savior for me and so I've been participating in online yoga classes and I have a favorite yoga teacher and her name is Clara Roberts Oss and Oss is spelled O-S-S. -S. I love um, this teacher. I, I just really resonate with the way she practices, with just her energy and her vibe. She has yoga videos on Gaia TV or Gaia.com I think it's called now but she also has her own membership portal right now. So she has a YouTube um, channel with some free videos and I've been doing those and she also has a membership portal and then a lot of long form videos on Gaia TV. So I'm following her and sometimes if I'm in the, um, if I'm challenging myself to do online yoga, I just search her name in Gaia, um, uh, who I'm a member with, and I just do her videos every single day. So I kind of just go through them. Um, so I'm trying to do that, to just stay on top of things. I feel like when I'm doing yoga, I just feel better in my body. I generally like more flexible, I feel more, I feel stronger. I feel also mentally more balanced as well. So yoga just seems like a good fit for me. But I know a lot of my colleagues, even people that have a serious fitness regime are just going for walks. We don't know how long this is gonna last, but I think right now, really what we need to do is, um, is get outside too, you know? Sandra wrote, Power Yoga Canada is also streaming yoga on Facebook and Instagram every day, even for non-members. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, there's so many, like, I think a lot of companies are coming forward right now. This is the time when we're really seeing, like, what the integrity is and the ability to provide service of certain um, companies. And so yoga studios are providing, like, online classes 
I'm a member of the surf community in, in the Great Lakes surf community and there's a surf shop that's doing free yoga and meditation classes online. Um, my gym is offering free online for all members. Um, yoga with Adrian has always been free, <laughs> which is awesome. And yeah, like I, I got a, a notice from a yoga studio, Moto Yoga, which is like a hot yoga and they're also offering free classes. And now Power Yoga Canada, um, according to Sandra, is offering free yoga classes on Facebook and Instagram every day. So this is really awesome. So there's a lot of opportunities for um, just moving your body. And so moving my body, that is the number one thing I think. Like I, I know I need that. And so that's something I'm prioritizing. Um, getting outside though. You know, so if I'm moving my body and outside, that's really helpful. Ryan, <laughs> what's up? Um, when it comes to so I'm I am practicing social distancing. It's unclear exactly what the rules are. I was talking about this on my podcast. Uh, the the podcast I was recording today, we're like I'm going surfing later after I record this. There's some waves, and there's probably going to be people out. And we had conversations around what are we going to do? So we're going to keep our two meter distance. There's considerations about like spitting in the water, right? It's lake water, so it's not necessarily the best disinfectant. Um, not dropping in on people. So with surfing, right? Like when you're taking a wave, you're, you're, some, you're sharing the wave and you're deciding who has priority to take that wave. And sometimes there's miscommunication and you can drop in on someone or hit somebody I mean, ideally, you never want that to happen. But if that happens, is there also the potential that we're transmitting an infection? Um, we're also, you know, trying not to carpool. Like generally people like the surfing community will carpool each with each other. So we're avoiding that, avoiding high fives, avoiding the like, yeah, brah. Like all that stuff is off limits right now. Um, Sandra said, I just returned from my 10 day Vipassana retreat a few weeks ago, but with all this going on, I'm having a hard time to focus on meditation. Any suggestions? I know you've done Vipassana. Yeah. You know, Sandra, to be honest, I have not done formal meditation for a while. And I know the thing, so one of, one of the experiences I have with Vipassana when I came back was it was hard in general to focus. Like, especially because I think, I don't know what your experience was specifically, or if this was the first 10 day you've done, because I've only done one. But I felt like when I was at the day eight mark, when we started to go into solitude, I felt like there was, because you're slowly boiling a frog in water almost, right? Like you start off with this really busy mind. You know, your mind is super active when you're in the silent 10 day retreat, you're meditating essentially 12 hours a day, formal seated meditation for at least three of those hours, you were not moving at all. And then you sort of go into this deep place where you're, you're very meditative. Um, and then on the 11th day, you're allowed to speak. And I found that even on that day, after being in such deep meditation, I had a hard time sitting. And when I got back, and then I got my cell phone back, I drove home, there was music on the radio, it was all this like sensory stimulation. When I came back and I was like, I'm going to do the two hour meditation a day that they recommend as a maintenance. And I, it was... It was tough. It was hard to manage sleeping and eating and just basic stuff. And then when we started adding work back in, I found it really challenging. So there's there's that element of it. And then, then all these considerations, um, you know, like life is coming back in and this is a, a tough time to be in. And I would say, you know, just when it comes to meditation is being with it. And you're, if you notice your busy mind, your mind is busier, um, you know, incorporating that into the practice. That's part of the practice, right? Is having the, um, yeah. And I know there isn't really an outcome that we're trying to achieve. I know Vipassana has a little bit of a different spin on things, but because there's essentially a, not a place you're trying to get to, but you're, you're examining solid spots in the body and you're trying to um, focus attention um, but I think, you know, when we talk about meta-awareness, when you're noticing that your mind is just going everywhere, um, just holding that, holding that in your awareness. You're thinking like, I am, you know, oh wow, I was just off for 10 minutes thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do about the toilet paper that's running out or how there's going to be lines at the grocery, whatever it is that's coming up. It's holding space for that and, and, uh, 
in, in compassion. I, it's tough when you come back because you have this standard now of your, you know, how mindful you can be and how quiet things can be, and then you come back. I was actually thinking about how this self isolation is a little bit like a yoga retreat, except there's just so much technology, so not quite. But um, we are really in this like contemplative state. And I wonder, you know, when we start to hit like ten day mark, if things start to settle in. Um, I'm I'm really predicting that when the social distancing recommendations start being lifted, I'm predicting that we're going to feel really overwhelmed by all the social interaction and we're probably going to stay a little bit distant for a bit. Um, I, so sleep for me is the biggest thing. And I think this is something we talked about. So sleep, I'm trying to get as much sleep as possible. Um, trying to be in bed by nine, not always succeeding, but trying to get at least seven hours. This is helpful for immune function. So I'm supporting my immune system, but also knowing that 85% of us who get coronavirus are probably not going to get a serious form of the illness. And what we're doing and what the goal of social distancing is, is to prevent the more vulnerable people from succumbing to the more serious forms of the of the disease right so i'm not necessarily concerned for my own health but i do want to prevent contracting it obviously i do want my immune system to be strong and i don't want to spread so and you can spread asymptomatically because that's one of the intelligent things about viruses is that they can infect some people and cause really serious um, circumstances and they can affect others and not cause much illness at all and that person feels good goes to work and spreads it to the 2.2 people that they you know so for every person that has coronavirus um they they're saying it's about 2.2 people that they'll spread it to so anywhere from like yeah one to five they're saying so probably 2.2 that can depend right it depends how well we do social distancing it depends on how tightly um uh, you know how connected the population is all of those things Try to keep my immune system strong, but also knowing that by keeping your immune system strong, you're not necessarily decreasing the transmission. Um, and uh, and we also know, yeah, like, you know, for the people who are over 70, who have lung issues, kidney issues, and heart issues, who have inflammatory conditions, we want to really make sure that we're um, protecting those people by not uh, allowing them to contract the disease. Um, but I'm trying to keep my immune system strong by sleeping, and so that's, I'm, t I'm, you know, putting a lot of priority on right now. My supplements, I'm just sticking to my normal supplements I, I normally take. I'm adding in a bit of garlic extract. With supplements, we just don't know. So there's a lot of stuff going around, herbal medicine practitioners that I follow, and, um, you know, nutritional supplementation experts. They, we just don't know. So we have general ideas about what supports our immune function. And we have general ideas about what um, c compounds are antiviral, but we don't know specifically if those things apply to the coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus that we're dealing with right now. So there's certain considerations. So we like vitamin A and vitamin D are generally helpful for our immune system and help us fight off viruses. But because we don't know much about the coronavirus, we there's some evidence okay so this is a little bit like technical but there's a enzyme that the virus um or a receptor on cells that the virus tends to lock onto called the ace2 receptor and that is typically in lung cells but it could also be in heart and gut cells and which is why it affects the lungs um this virus and the more ace2 receptors you have in your cells, potentially the worse the symptoms. And there's some evidence that maybe vitamin A and D can upregulate or increase the level of ACE2 receptors. I've only heard this from one source. We just don't know. I wouldn't say it's bad to make sure that your vitamin D status is optimal. And so for all this stuff, this is really where you want to bring in your healthcare practitioner um, and get, get on telemedicine and really figure out like, what supplement should I be taking? What do you recommend? Because it's all going to depend on your context. I don't think it's bad for anyone's vitamin D status to be in the sweet spot, right? Like I'm not advocating anyone be like vitamin D deficient, um, but we just don't know. And so when people are writing things about like, oh, I'm taking high dose vitamin C, we don't know if that is going to do anything. 
we don't know if it's going to make things worse. It shouldn't, but we just don't know. And then when it comes to herbal medicines, we're like, well, there are certain antiviral uh, medicines or, or medicines that support the immune system and support the part of the immune system that is good at fighting off viruses. But we also know that we don't know why some people are getting more severe forms of this disease. And it could be because the virus is damaging lung cells or our immune system is because something that happens when we're infected is our immune system creates our symptoms. And the, the stronger the immune response, sometimes the worse we can fare because our immune system is trying to fight this virus and it's having a hard time turning off and it starts to create damage and inflammation in our body. So by promoting a robust immune response, we might actually be doing damage. There's something called the cytokine storm that's been going around that people are talking about. And this, again, is purely theoretical. We don't know if this actually happens, but there are certain herbs that, could that cause a cytokine storm? So we are, as health practitioners, not treating or talking about preventing COVID-19 because we just don't know. The medical community doesn't know. They're using like off-label drugs, hoping that it could provide some support. Um, so we're, I'm looking more at, you know, I'm following my own supplement regime where I am taking nutrients that I know I need supplements for. I am optimizing my vitamin D, but I'm not going overboard. I'm taking my fish oils. I'm taking a little bit of garlic extract just because I have some in my cupboard and, you know, it's all good to take garlic. I'm supporting my gut health because gut health is, you know, when you have dysbiosis, it pushes your immune system to 2H, TH2 dominance as your body is trying to fight off and regulate that dysbiosis. So if it's trying to fight off a fungal or bacterial overgrowth or a sinus infection, it's probably gonna be shifting to TH2 dominance. Um, and that shifts the immune system away from TH1, which is responsible for killing viruses. So we wanna be promoting TH1 immune system function by sleeping, reducing our stress, reducing our inflammation. Those are the three big things. And then, you know, managing underlying conditions, just going about our health care regime as best we can at this point. So if part of your health care regime is to support your gut and to follow a plan to clear SIBO or to manage gut dysbiosis, then continuing that. But then also talking to your health care, reaching out if you need to, to your healthcare practitioner, like how can I stay on track during this time? You know, how can I what supplements should I add at this time? Are there any supplements I shouldn't be taking at this time? All that stuff is just really nuanced and really depends on the con, on the um, context. So with my supplements, I'm just following stuff as normal. I take vitamin C as part of my regime. I'm just continuing to do it and I'm not necessarily like trying anything extra. Um, for social interaction, I, I've been doing so much video. <laughs> it's actually kind of, it's actually kind of normal. Like it's not, you know, I think I saw a meme going around and I thought it was funny. It's not exactly true, but I thought it was funny. It was like that monkey meme where it's like that side eye monkey toy. And it's like, when you find out that your normal daily life is called quarantine. <laughs> so I think like a lot of interactions happen on, on social media um, and on the internet. And it's funny because the conversation has gone from, oh, we're so disconnected because of technology to now seeing that it's actually technology connecting us during the 1918 Spanish flu, we didn't have WhatsApp Messenger and FaceTime, and we probably were way more isolated during those times, right? So I'm using social media to connect with people. Um, I'm using my apps and, and video conferencing and um, trying to connect as much as possible. I know Anne, who might still be watching, ran a virtual dance party, which is so cool. Um, some of our colleagues are doing like virtual therapy. I have some um, recording podcasts. I have a, um, a connection actually later today to talk about uh, Zoom uh, supports or like group therapy um, type, uh, type circles um, with a therapist in the community to talk about like how we can support people, what people need. Like we just don't know what, what everyone needs right now. And I don't know if we know what we need. Yeah, Anne says it was fun, her dance party. Yeah, so cool. Um, so we're looking at ways that we can support people and what we actually, um, you know, how can we still stay connected while maintaining a distance, right? This is a big thing. Um, yeah, so those are the things I'm doing. 
I'm trying to think what else. Um, I'm using this as a time. Someone was sharing a meme about Sir Isaac Newton, and I don't know. I haven't fact-checked it. I just kind of took it as like, oh, this is cool. Let's share it on. <laughs> but there, uh, the, univers the, the story goes, the university that Sir Isaac Newton graduated from was closed for two years because of an outbreak. And so he was essentially like quarantined or social distanced or in self-isolation. And that's when a lot of his really significant discoveries came out. So it was this idea of quiet contemplation, of distancing himself from work and school, and just sort of checking in. I'm noticing these different opportunities arise, you know? And so I'm not too scared about the financial aspect of things. Um, I think this is a time where we're gonna see things shift. And I hope that, um, you know, I mean, we were talking too on, on the podcast recording earlier about um, about how, you know, you're seeing things come out of the woodwork. So yes, you're seeing people hoard toilet paper and supplies, um, but you're also seeing people offer to go buy groceries for their neighbors. Like in my condo, there's a list on how we can support the elderly, more vulnerable people living in the building. And really understanding that like we're doing all this so the estimates are that 30 to 50% of us are going to get uh, or come into contact with the coronavirus. Um, and the vast majority of us won't get significant symptoms. It'll be like a cold or a flu. But we're doing all of this social distancing. And we only have, I think in all of Canada, the last time I checked, it was about 690 cases. So it's not like this huge significant thing. What we're doing, we are, um, we are agreeing and coming together to keep the viral load down to support our medical system and support those people who are more vulnerable and to prevent death uh, for those really vulnerable people, even if they're a minority in our population. And I think that's like a beautiful thing. I was walking down the street thinking about that, like we're really cooperating to, for the bet and, to, and making sacrifices for the benefit or to protect the more vulnerable people in our population. That's truly what a society is. And I think that's beautiful. And as we're doing that collectively, what could emerge from that in terms of the ways that we connect with each other, that we support each other, that we learn about ourselves and our communities and how, you know, you know, maybe it's not so much about like being in a room together, uh, touching, <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't sound right, um, but about like how we connect emotionally with people and maybe we, and, and how does technology connect us rather than isolate us? Because right now it's really, as I said, technology that's connecting us in this moment in time. So there's also themes about nature, which I'm not sure what to make of, because I feel like as soon as we go back to, you know, what we normally are doing. I mean, this is actually calling into question a lot of things, right? Because the airlines are in dire straits currently and no one is flying, little transportation. So the impact that we're having on the environment is like drastically cut. And what does that mean for our future plans, right? Are we going to just go back to everything as it was and continue to fly? Or are we gonna be more mindful and more consider, taking more into consideration and like, you know, how we are spreading ourselves over the globe, how we're um, commuting and, and how we're, um, you know, the sort of pollution that we're generating. So I'm interested to see what's, what's gonna happen with all this. So that was a little bit of an aside from the supplements I take, but that those are the kind of things going through my head right now. In terms of like entertaining myself, I have a list of books that I actually have not even cracked. I'm trying to get my website back up because half of it is a pottery website template. So I'm trying to get that organized. I'm trying to offer some more things to you guys um, in the form of programs and things that can get away from one-on-one -on -one visits. And I'm trying to learn how to juggle and do crow pose. So I'm like, I have these things that I'm like, I would like to do a headstand in yoga. Let's see if I can just plug away at this for 10 minutes where normally I wouldn't have time. Um, so there are all these things kind of happening right now. And right now I'm going to go surfing. So I'll see how that goes. But after I walk my dog, I'm going to go for a surf. And, uh, and I think that's one of the things I love about surfing is we're, we are in the social distancing kind of already. Like you're, you're out in the water with people, you're all doing something kind of weird because it's still March and we're in Canada and the water temps are like probably five degrees right now. And um, 
not a lot of people swim in the lakes in general so to be in the lake is kind of weird and uh you're just kind of with this crowd of like weirdos who are really into surfing and you you can sometimes talk to them but you you know you're together and separate at the same time so it's kind of like what this is all about so wish you guys a good day let me know if you have more questions i think the next time i come on we're going to talk about autoimmune um, conditions because i was having a few questions from some of my patients or some people who follow me who are dealing with autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's or lupus and they want to know are they more at risk for more complications of COVID-19 we know it's people with cardiovascular disease diabetes lung issues the elderly who are typically more susceptible to complications but what about someone with autoimmune disease what about someone with um you know like we know mental health conditions are typically associated with inflammation like is that person more susceptible immunocompromised we know are more susceptible but there's like these other sort of gray areas that we're not sure so we're going to talk about that and some theories around that what you can do uh, i don't want to fear monger but um just to like empower you and let you know some things and um you know empower you to more self-care if you need it so let me know if you have any questions thank you guys for watching thanks for sharing uh, Sandra, let me know how you're doing with your meditation. Um, maybe you can go on and lead us in a meditation. That'd be cool. Or I could. I have some meditation videos up on the group already. I'm looking at them. Uh, I was looking at them the other day. I'm kind of like, well, oh, those were kind of old. Um, but we might do a live meditation together. It's all about what you guys want. So uh, we might do yoga together. That would be cool. I don't know if I could lead a yoga class. I'm pretty sure I could. All right, guys. So take care. Have a great day. And yeah, fire me your questions. Bye.